Bills fans, what's up? Um, pretty much gonna do like a Bills rewatch, Bills review video, if you will. Maybe a new little thing I'll do every Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, more so Tuesday, I mean, I gave myself a day to be pissed off again yesterday, as all of us were totally shit on a Monday. Because that's the way you feel after a Bills loss. Um, and did a little bit of a rewatch yesterday. I don't know why I did that. Because it just was, you know, as if it wasn't this disgusting first time to watch it. You know, second time. You know, just so it's not to puke. I had to close my eyes a few times. It was just, ugh. It was, uh, yeah, it was every bit as shitty as it was the first time. Even though you knew what was coming, it was just to watch. It was just... You hate seeing a team in Bills uniforms play like that. It just, it just really, um, it's there, it's demoralizing. It definitely is. But uh, you wanted to hear what the the coach had to say on a Monday. Uh, wanted to hear, you know, what everybody's opinions and feedback were. I mean, it was a lot of the same. Obviously, it's, it sucked, and it's just. Yeah, it really, given the position the team was in just a, just two and a half weeks ago, and then to go out there, you know, a couple of times on national TV and get your pants pulled down, especially that last one, you literally just got your pants pulled down, and just 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 made to grab your ankles kind of game, bend over, grab your ankles style game. That that's the kind of defeat it was at home. Um, but enough about that. You know, listen to the coach, and sometimes you listen to. Um, some of the things he says, a lot of it is repetitive, but he says things in there, you know, these little snippets. It's like, and one thing that he has constantly said, and I've noticed this, and I've even gone back and watched some prior press conferences, is keep saying, we're building, we're building, we're building. And then you do have to remind yourselves, um, I have to remind myself, there is only 22 guys left on this roster that were on this roster last year and a lot of those are just back end roster filler type of players uh, bit part role players some inactive some not depending on a given week um, and just the uh, yeah the overall play he said it wasn't effort you know he's talking about run fits and then execution to me if it's not effort and it's more about execution and reteaching to me, then there's a talent gap. To me, that's his way of saying that's 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 code for there's a talent gap. And you look at it, and you look at the Saints, and you know, all all due respect, you know, I'm not taking any credit away from them at all. They deserve obviously more than deserve to win. They're a very good football team, led by a Hall of Fame quarterback and made possibly a Hall of Fame head coach. Definitely one of the greatest offensive minds this league has ever seen definitely in the modern age and any age probably in Sean Payton I mean so it just then that's what you have when you have that decade plus of 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 synergy between the play caller and a quarterback at that level and you have to be good to stay together that long and you know they've been able to retool revamp and I'll use them as a bit of an example not only just because of that reason but you just look at what they've done in the last few years, they've hit on a lot of their draft picks, a lot of those first and second, even some of the third round guys they've been able to procure are making plays for them. Even going back to 13, you know, Kenny Vaccaro didn't even play and he's really, <clears throat> excuse me, really played well this season for them. But you, you look at that offensive line that, that mauled the Bills up front and, you know, a guy like Armstead, you know, it was a third round pick, but play. You know, he's their franchise left tackle. You know, Ramzek, who's playing for Strafe, he's you know is their longtime right tackle is is playing very well. Um, Unger, who's a, a you know the guy that they got back in the um, Jimmy Graham trade, who's you know a sensational center, but then the other guy, Artis Pate. So they've got. Two first, two three first round talents up there, and then a third round talent. Those are three guys that they drafted. I believe Wolford was the guy they got from the um, Alliance. Kamara, Ingram, 
they were able to ship Peterson out of there. That was just, you know, a bad marriage from the beginning, and they rectified that by trading him away, eating their loss, and then you look on defense, they made a lot of good, you know, just some, some really good picks. You know, Williams' kid, I think there's a couple of Williams in their secondary, obviously Lattimore, who would have been the Bills' pick, mind you, he would have been the Bills' pick if they were not able to trade out of the trade out of 11 with the Chiefs, they would have drafted Marshawn Lattimore. But hey, Trey White's been playing pretty well. Doesn't have the girth of talent around him that the Saints do. But Lattimore's a hell of a player. So that, that should be encouraging that they know how to ID players like that and say, hey, that's, a, that's an amazing guy that we want. Even though he's on another team, they were able to get back at the first because look at this team. It is devoid of talent. Know. And he, he is right. Uh, McDermott's right. They didn't win five games by accident. They won because they fought hard. They made plays. They hustled. They got their hands on the ball. You know, you had EJ Gaines who pulling his groin muscle, I believe, in Atlanta, even stripping a ball out. You had, you know, if Leonard Johnson hangs on to a ball in New York and gets that first turnover, who knows what happens. So they... There's still some of that there, but within that, the offense really hasn't held up their weight much at all, particularly in these last two games where it's gotten so out of hand because the defense, you know, granted, I'm not saying the defense has played great because I don't know if it's effort. I think, it, I think it's a combination of, of talent and just getting worn down, that they're not talented enough one and two and they're getting worn down. And because of a couple of injuries and just getting exposed for a talent gap, they're, they're getting hung out to dry. And they trade away a, a, a former first-round pick because the guy was a problem child, and we all know that. Now that's the new narrative on Twitter and, you know, radio that covers the Bills, that Darius is something. Darius was in the, like I alluded to, he was in the middle of a lot of bad, bad, bad Bills defenses and a lot of equally bad performances over the past few years and even before that going back to the was he on, was even definitely was on the Wanstat defense that got shredded to shit Kyle was on those defenses he definitely was so was so was Mario Hughes wasn't there yet but those guys up front and and Williams sorry Kyle I've noticed that he's looked every bit his age this year. Uh, a guy who's just he was getting mauled up front. He was just getting mauled. And people will say, well, Darius took up the guy. You're not going to. You. It's not fiscally responsible to pay a guy the money Darius is making to be a run plugger. It's not. He's not J.J. Watt. He's not a self-motivated guy who, granted, has fallen on some injuries um, the last few years, but he's not J.J. Watt. Even at his peak, he was not J.J. Watt. So, apologies for the text or in the video. Um, to continue to, and then just the, the, the lack of example he set for everybody there, that he's the highest paid player in the team and he's just loafing it. And I'd ask anybody, what, when, when's the last time he changed the game? <laughs> when? I just don't want to hear it about him. Um, but using the Saints as an example, you look at the Bills drafts, just Darius is a guy, a first-round pick that they've sent away. Uh, Sammy was a first-round pick who the Bills traded way too much for, that they traded away, recouped some value. They weren't going to pick his um, pick his option up. We know that. That's that's a first, Those are two first-round picks. And a fourth round pick and one guy that's not on your team any longer. Thankfully, the Bills at least got back a second. Uh, Darby was a second round pick, does nothing for you. Bills get a third back for him. That's what they're trying to do in order to restock the cupboards. Uh, that's what they had to do. I mean, you look at you look at Ragland. Bills were able to recoup a fifth. That's a second round pick. Quanjo, a second round pick. I mean, Gilmore, even if they had wanted to resign, let's just say they did, which a lot of Bills fans could have cared less at that point because he was 
he was loafing it. He had his own agenda, didn't want to get hurt. Would we all know we all know what he's about. Put a tweet out the other day, he was joined at Dwayne Harmon right after the um, the Broncos touchdown pass. He let Demarius Thomas cross his face and catch it right in front of him and he's turning around yelling at the safety behind him. Like, you let him get across your face, dude. Nothing was ever Gilmore's fault. Everybody knows that Gilmore was the best. Nothing was ever his fault. You know, he'd stop in mid play to go yell at a guy after he's you know, his guy's, you know, Chris Hogan play, we all know. And a few others. Remember uh remember Tynes this this wide receiver named Tynes. I, I forget his first name escapes me. It was just the fifth wide receiver for the Patriots catching a touchdown between him and I wanna say it was um who was the free safety at the time. I, I think it might have been Corey Graham. It might have been, but don't hold me to that. But yeah, he caught it right between those two. And I was like, this guy is, but that's Tom Brady, you know, he'll, you know. But I'm going off on a rambling. But yeah, the, just the point is they're, they've gotten nothing out of their drafts. I mean, you look at the guys who are first and second round talents where you, you should be getting good players that are going to be on your team for five, six, seven years, you look back at those, you know, you have to go back to 09 with Wood, 12 with, with Glenn, and Glenn is, what kind of standing does he have, you know, with his injuries, you know, good player, but still, where are they going to go with him? Um, it, Trey White, they just drafted him, but you look at the drafts from 16, nothing, what kind of impact is Shaq Lawson making? I don't notice anything. I, I really don't. He hasn't he hasn't jumped off the screen or once for me. Don't know if he has for you. I haven't seen anything. This day one starter off the bus. Remember what Whaley said? Whew. You know, came from Clemson. Rex Rex would draft anybody who wore Clemson. Shit, he drafted his son's uh, college roommate. Remember Tony Stewart? That was his son's college roommate, so he drafted that. Made sure he got drafted. That's where this, you know, that's what I'm trying to impress is this what bad shakes this organization was. I mean, it was def dysfunction junction. Let's just be honest about the Bills. I hate saying that, but that's what McDermott came into and had to, to clean up, and it doesn't happen in a season. Granted, they're in a playoff spot right now, but there's a lot, there was a heavy ass lift that this guy undertook. And it's going to, he used, he said a great thing, and I'm glad I just remembered it. And we kind of lose, we all lost sight of it, you know, with that 5-2. and two. There's pain in the process. There is. There's pain in it every day. There's a pain in the process of going to work. There's a pain in the process of cooking meals. There's a pain in the process of life. But we do it because we have to, right? There's a pain in going to the gym every day. You know, some days you don't, some days you do, some days it hurts, some days it doesn't. But there's a, you know, hopefully there's a reward at the end of it, you know. As, as, as is anything, there's the reward of a good meal at the end of cooking it. There's the reward of, you know, working hard and getting what you want and achieving goals, whether it's through work or, you know, something, personal projects, whatever. But, yeah, there's, there's pain in it. And definitely in this one because there's been just so much dysfunction that, you can't undo it in a span of what? Eleven months? You can't do it. You just you just can't do it. I think he was hired probably eleven months ago now. If it's, yeah, January first. I think it was January first on the fourteenth, I think he was named Bill's head coach. So this would be the eleven month if if I'm correct, this would be the eleven month not even a year. And you know, Mike Rodak, who gets a lot of stink from Bills fans, and sometimes even I feel like he's being a little, you know, you know, we're a wounded animal, was his face it as a fan base. We're just a wounded animal, and any poking we get, we strike back with, with the most vitriol spew we can think of, because it's just like, look, 17 years, and it stems back to the four Super Bowls, and the Music City Miracle, and every other thing you could think of. It just... We don't want to hear it anymore. But he's right. I looked at um, a tweet he put out, and was, look at the way these um, this guy, uh, these guys have operated. 
um, I could only see 11, 12 guys that are on the roster now that are definitely locks for next year. I, that's what I can see. I see just just the ones he alluded to. I, I throw in DeMarco and Ryan Groy in there because they picked up Groy's option. They brought in DeMarco, but I don't see I don't see other I don't see Shaq I, I could see them finding a way to maneuver Shaq Lawson off this roster. I can see them finding a way. I can see them cutting shady. I could see them finding a way to maneuver Clay's contract off the roster. That they've look what they've done so far. Look what their track record tells you so far with this team until they make it theirs. That they're not going to stand on ceremony with a lot of leftovers from. And I like Charles Clay. That was a haphazard contract. It was. It was a very haphazard, short sighted contract that Dysfunction Junction left with them because they were all about the now. They have, and again, another thing McDermott says, you know, have to have one eye on what's going on now, but also an eye on what's, what's down the road. And I never heard too much of that. It was all about, oh, we're close, we're close. We just got to get over the hump. We're close. That, that was, no matter who it was, whether it was Gailey, whether it was uh, Rex or from Whaley, any of those guys, oh, uh, Brandon, it was all about, yep, let's just trade up, trade the farm for a wide receiver with no quarterback. Let's, you know, sign this, this tight end away from a division uh, foe to this ridiculous contract that they can't match that'll put us in peril years down the road. Let's give this contract to a player who's failed multiple drug tests and is one suspension away from getting half the season suspended or whatever it was and but yeah let's put no uh, safety um, measures in the contract that would protect us um, fiscally let's not do that um, it just all these things all these things you know we trade for a running back um, he's a little irritated so let's give him more money just to appease him uh, just things like this things like this and just the, the bat again you, you can scroll back through the drafts they've got Preston Brown, who's you know, maybe not long for the roster. And again, in the, in, in the middle of a lot of those bad Rex defenses, I mean, he was a rookie in 14, but he was in the middle of some of those defenses. I don't know if he's their shoot du jour for middle linebacker. I, I, I don't know. I, this roster is going to go through a big makeover. And we're seeing... You know, you got to be built for the long haul in the NFL. And what November and December does, it separates contenders from pretenders. And that's why the Bills always got, you know, they always got gapped in between those in time frames. And it started off hot in September and October. But once big boy ball came around, they just, there's the gap. Because the real teams that have won good quarterbacks and have you know good surrounding talent always separate they always do they just always do one is definitely the quarterback but that that talent has to be there and it just hasn't been we we like to inflate even i even am, am guilty of this we like to sometimes inflate some of the bills so-called talent we do we we, we used to like say oh aaron would never Aaron Williams was this leader and was this solid safety. I, I, I don't remember a play Aaron Williams made in a game that changed the game. I don't. I can't name one to you. I just remember him as a guy who was very hyper-emotional, yelling and screaming against the Patriots and saying he didn't give an F because, you know, he got a, a personal foul and then misconduct, unsportsmanlike conduct. Jerry followed it up with an unsportsmanlike conduct and nobody can calm him down and I can remember him always getting hurt and he's a guy who had to switch positions just to save his NFL career. That's what I remember Aaron Williams as. That's it. Not anything game related. I remember more plays out of <laughs> Denora Cersei at safety. <laughs> if, if that, if that, um, that'll try to 
you know, give you an idea of, yeah, guy who hasn't been on the roster in over four years. So, yeah, this the, the talent gap is, is there still. Uh, you know, if coach says it's this, it's that, I, it's, a, it's a talent thing. It's a talent thing. They were left bare bones resources, bare bones draft, and they had to get creative and see guys just that are older and slower at linebacker, guys that are just not as talented in the middle of the defensive tackle, guys who are winding down their careers like a Kyle. And to go back to Mike Rodak's tweet, there's only one defensive tackle under contract for next year. That's Adolphus Washington. I could see them just cutting Adolphus Washington. There's another day one starter off the bus who got himself in trouble this past offseason. Didn't get any charges for it, but was also coming from Ohio State for, was it the, um, the, the got arrested for soliciting, trying to pick up a prostitute. So there, there's another guy that this regime wouldn't have drafted. So there's, yeah, another big makeover is coming, another big shift. And it, I have to believe it's for the better. I mean, I think all of us, you know, we always have to believe it's for the better until proven otherwise. It can be critical, of course, but until proven otherwise, I like to be optimistic just to maintain my sanity. And, um, I know there's a lot of narratives out there. I was very critical of Tyrod Taylor after the game, and I still am. I've seen the same things, just he just doesn't process what's going on in front of him fast enough, and he just doesn't pull the trigger. He might see it, but he just doesn't let it go. And people are talking about, I mean, oh, great, I remembered this, um, because I was just going to say I was done with the video. The coordinators talked yesterday, and I was more interested in what um, Dennison had to say. And Dennison said this little snippet in the video, which was just like, whoa, I've heard this before. We talked to him, look, sometimes we'll have to make some chance, chances, just like we said. Uh, he he took it as we need to find a check down, and maybe we can make a first down run in it. Given Mike's skill set. So, basically... The coaches are saying, we talked to him, said, you know, push the ball downfield more. And because coaches are, let's, coaches are never going to put the, play, the players fat to the fire in front of the media. So never, that's never going to happen. Never going to happen. And, but he said without saying, look, we told him. We kind of said with saying it. We told him, look, you just got to push the ball downfield sometimes. And. You know, it only targeted Benjamin three times, and it was on the opening drive. And then one other target, it was just so vastly thrown over his head that he had no chance to catch it. It was there was not that was not a 50-50 ball. That was a, a zero ball. Nobody was catching that in the field of play. It's and then obviously it's it's a hell of a comparison. And it's not even fair, but you see the you see the passes Breeze was throwing. You know. It's just he's giving his guys chances and they're going up and making plays and catching balls in stride and I can bang on about this, but there's nothing we've seen from from Tyrod and I want to like Tyrod. I wanted him to work out, but I believe that they know that he's no more than a bridge placeholder and people will want to say, well, Dennison's a dense uh, play caller. He's, He's not good. He's this, he's that. To me, when you're axing play callers, coordinators, whatever, that's just fancy code for the quarterback's not good enough. That's all it is. It's a move to appease fans and knee-jerk, maybe to a, a, a an owner who likes to react to, to media criticism because everything in life is about, everything in life is about, it's optics. It's brand, it's optics, it's, it's perception. That's all it is. Most everything in life, and sometimes you get some hap- you get some higher ups that react to that stuff. And good organizations just don't listen to it. They just tune it out. They don't listen to it. They don't hear it. They don't allow it to affect the inner workings of what's going on. And we know this organization was prepared to move on from him as quarterback. And granted, it was to Brian Hoyer, but. As Bills fans, we full-fledged know that Brian Hoyer would have been no more than a stopgap to a quarterback of the future. And Tyrod is that. 
He had to take a pay cut to stay, a significant one. We know that. And I believe that this regime said, well, it's got to be, if you, if you want to stay, it has to be under these guidelines. One, this contract. Two, we're not going to tailor anything to you. You know, no pun intended. We're not going to, this is going to be our offensive system. You either thrive in it or you don't. And him, you know, we know Tyrod is a very tremendous, he's a highly competitive guy. Obviously, he's made it to the NFL. Played D1 college football quarterback. He, he's parlayed his, what he's had into a nice, a little nice career for himself. You know, so this isn't, you know, I always, you know, you know, the bashing Tyrod Taylor time, uh, hour, I don't, or half hour, or whatever. I, no, it's it's reality. His, you know, this is his apex. This is his ceiling. You know, the guy is, is a nice little starter you can have in place, you know, to s settle things down, but he gets ex he gets exposed as a guy who's just not, he's not quick in the draw. He doesn't, he doesn't mentally play the game fast enough. Has the physical ability, but his mind just doesn't, work fast enough in concert with, with the game. That's all it is. It's it's not like, I don't wish him ill as a person. I don't dislike him. He's just he's not good enough to man the position for the Bills to take that next step that we all want. And I put out this tweet earlier that was kind of misconstrued about 300-yard passers. Um, a kid who's, he's, he's a big Tyrod Taylor fan. He's not bad. He's just he follows me. He's just he's always a poly, he's just the eternal Tyrod Taylor apologist and I think it's just a defense mechanism. And the tweet was the Bills have only had four three hundred yard passers that won games. They've had thirteen three hundred yard passing games since oh six and only four of those were wins. And so in the last twelve years they very very rarely win games because of their quarterback. Two of them were by, two of them were by Fitzpatrick. One was the Pats game at home, breaking that 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 the, that streak against the Pats. He threw for 360. The other was the season before against the Bengals in Cincinnati. Threw for a little over 300. It was kind of a comeback game. They were down, and they they ended up routing the Bengals actually, like 49 to 31. And then the other one was Kyle Orton's first game that they won, Detroit, the Dan Carpenter 58 yard field goal. And then the one before that was J.P. Lossman in Houston. The two 80-yard touchdown passes to uh, Lee Evans, and I think he ended the game, so touchdown pass to Peerless Price, 24-21. So those games right there, they won because their quarterback was making plays in the passing game. But, but there's only been 13 300-yard performances. So the quarterback play has been so bad they can't even get garbage yards. And why do I say that? Because let's be honest, sports is entertainment. Football is entertainment. Passing yards are fun to watch. They're fun for fantasy reasons. They're fun for aesthetic reasons. They're fun. And it's nice to look at your team and see them, the receivers up and the league leaders and your, your quarterback up, you know, making hay in the, in the league leaders and into passing yards or completions or touchdown passes. And, and this is something Bills fans see none of. We see none of it. That's why we are so excited about Sammy Watkins and Kelvin Benjamin, because something like that helps bridge that, is a bridge to that. The, I, the, the same reason we get ex I, excited about any quarterback that's young and that that's that's the hope that we all want that hey we want to see that if for nothing no other reason hey you know he was one of the we don't we don't we don't get any of that as bills fans we get none of that and that was more of the long view point of me putting out that tweet is we don't even get the entertainment and enjoyment and satisfaction of those other reasons of course we want to win the game but and that's obvious but those other secondary third fourth reasons we don't get that we don't even get that consolation prizes of that we don't get that and that that's frustrating to me you know how many countless offensive coordinators that we had you know or head coaches who were you know gaily being the only one really you know and i always think that qb whispers a myth but i do think good coaching helps and whether dennison is the guy or isn't that's n n neither here nor there to me 
because eventually there's no, as it's currently constructed, there's just not enough talent at starting quarterback. I don't know what Nate Peterman's going to be. I don't. I'm not going to indict him rightly or wrongly or endorse him or whatever. But the idea of finding out is exciting. The idea of them procuring a quarterback in the first round that these guys feel is that guy is exciting. And that's that's what it's all about. It's 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 about giving your fan base that that hope, that excitement and being able to at least talk shit. Oh, my guy does this, you know. Oh, my guy won anything. Statistically, it, it that's fun and we don't get that fun and we haven't gotten it in a long time. Just forget winning games and going to the playoffs. We just want a little slice of that pie too. <laughs> But that's it, Bills fans. Um, to even talk, have talked about the game as a rewatch or anything, there was nothing. They just got railroaded. Saints are a more talented team, a more finely tuned team, led by a better quarterback uh, with a with a head coach he's been with who's still very good and just won a Super Bowl together. So it, it, that that's and there's a talent gap there at, 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 in, the, in that area, and there's a talent gap throughout the, both football teams offensively and defensively you know one team led by first year head coach it's only nine games in the other guy's been a head coach for 12 12 years and had been a pretty high level coordinator quarterback coach before that for for like six giants cowboys under you know parcells so he's you know jim fossil Coaching a Super Bowl with Fossil, I believe. So the guy has skins on the wall. Hopefully McDermott gets those. I mean, he's been in a few Super Bowls. Eagles, Panthers. We need one with the Bills. Um, uh, as it relates to the um, L.A. Chargers, still hard for me to say that. L.A. Chargers, unfortunately. I feel bad for San Diego because us Bills fans know what the threat of relocation was. And it was always over our heads for all those years. And it was horrible because... I don't know about you guys. I'm not going to speak for you guys. I could have never in good conscience rooted for the team if they would have moved and been rebranded. I couldn't have continued my fandom with that. I couldn't have. It always would have had to have been the Buffalo Bills. And they are, thankfully, so that's neither here nor there. So I feel, that said, I feel bad for the people in San Diego. But the LA Chargers, uh, Rivers, Philip Rivers and Concussion Protocol. Um, that obviously affects the game massively. Uh, so we'll see how that, that plays out throughout the week. That was announced yesterday. And we'll see how that goes. Um, if that continues to train. He, he, the thing that really is more most telling about that is he self-reported it. And that's like, if a guy that tough who's played through MCL tears, ACL tears, you know, he's made so many consecutive starts. He's been an Ironman regardless irregardless of their 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 wins their losses the guys as tough as nails um and he went into the facility and self-reported that that's pretty that's a pretty massive thing and if the bills want to try to get into the playoffs this is a game this is this is a must win game this week is as big a must this is as much a must win as a must win is and it's a big rebound game this game coming up is this and it, it was supposed to be this week against the saints but you know what? You've been bitch smacked two weeks in a row. Granted, you're traveling west. You're playing a team with an inferior record that's playing in a desert wasteland of a, of a that's a soccer stadium. This is a team you could go out and and and, and highlight against. And I'm gonna be watching very close. We all are. How they they should be pissed. I want I wanted to see them be play pissed this past week. But again, the talent, it's Ingram, first round pick, Kamora, second round pick, who looks like a, a wonderful piece. I mean, uh, Michael Thompson, I believe, is a, a second round pick, making plays for them. But you look all across their roster, these are, you know, home drafted guys. And I want the Bills to get that kind of roster one day where their home grown players are on the field making plays for them and they don't get caught with their pants down and have to try to go out in free agency or if they have to they can be a lot more shrewd and calculated about it 
as opposed to what the prior regimes have done. All right, Bills fans, I'm going to shut up, leave you alone. I appreciate the 1,000 plus views. I didn't even think I was going to get that much, honestly. I really haven't. I don't really care about view counts so much, but I appreciate all the interaction that the video got. And I got a, and I appreciate all the interaction, whether it's critical or praising or, you know, it could be totally neutral. It doesn't matter. I really appreciate everybody who took the time out to watch and react to it, give it a like subscribe whatever you did i really really appreciate it because it's still that's time out of your day time out of your week and time is valuable so thank you guys i really appreciate it and go bills hopefully they get a w this week and um and have something positive to talk about next uh, next monday or the a few hours after the game have a good rest of the week guys i appreciate it again take care